Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Not Part of Your Scene. This is the Pool List Podcast for May the 8th, 2019. I'm just going to go through what's available next week, what's uh, what's catching my eye, what looks interesting, and we could just talk about some comic news and, and comics in general uh, while we do that. So, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can go to at Chris Sarda on Twitter. You can also go to at not part of your scene on Instagram and also not part of your scene.com. That's about it for now. I don't, you know, I could fill this up with a lot of stuff because we also do a, a podcast, um, at chaotic sports on Twitter and a few other things, um, on the YouTube channel. Uh, we, I do just basically a lot of reviews, a lot of talking about comics and, and a little music. So anyway, let's just get into it. Um, we're going to go uh, pretty quick here. Uh, we'll see how quick it actually is. So I use, like I said before, I use comiclist.com. League of Geeks also has a really good um, up-to-date list, uh, a little bit more flashy with pictures and stuff. But for um, the nature of this podcast, I normally just do a comic list because I can open up uh, the the um, solicit very well or much easier. So uh, I'm just going to go alphabetical order by publisher pretty much and and see what uh, what catches my eye. Let me know on Twitter, guys, at Chris Art or in the comments in, on the YouTube channel what you're looking for if I miss something, um, if uh, something's really cool that I missed for sure, or if uh, you just disagree with uh, the things that I'm reading. For example, Age of X-Men uh, book is going to come out, and I'm going to talk about that, and it doesn't seem like a lot of people are into it. Anyway, um, the first one is I don't often talk about Aardvark, uh, Vanaheim. It seems like uh, Cerberus is, um, is uh, you know, just reprinted all the time. I see them in, in dollar bins and stuff. It's one of those things I just would like, I think it would be cool to just get the story and, and read through. Uh, I, I just seem to have been, I've seen a couple in the dollar bins, in the dollar bins, quarter bins and stuff, and I just haven't been grabbing them because I've seen other stuff. Uh, but this is a, a cool place to start. It is a C- Cerberus woman. I still want to call it Cerebrus. That's how. That's what kind of a wacko I am here. Um, so I don't even know the story that well. But when it says something like, uh, "Ever wonder what the illegitimate daughter of Batvark and the whore of Babylon would be like?" Gosh, who hasn't? Get ready for uh, Cerberus woman, the tyr- tyrannical queen of real Amazon dot com island, and her legion of Mason Dixon Greek mano horses. I don't even. That just was blubber to me but it still sort of interests me and the cover looks pretty cool too has a real more of i would say of a greek feel to it so if i that's not one that i'm going to go put on my list that i'm going to order off uh you know at my local comic store but if i see it on the shelf just happens to be there i'll probably pick it up just because that's pretty funny to me in general um next up is a bunch of stuff from uh, Aftershock, uh, Last Space Race number four and Oberon number four. Now I picked up Last Space Race number one and actually enjoyed it a lot. And I, I just sort of got lost or didn't see it on the shelf again, didn't put it on my pull list kind of thing. So it's one of those things where I will probably, um, I'll probably check out the, uh, the trade for it for sure. Uh, or always keep my eye out for, when the issues, you know, end up in dollar bins or something like that. But, um, I, I read the solicit. There's not really that much of a spoiler for me, at least, uh, for number four, but I just wanted to point it out because it is cool. One I am reading every month is Oberon, uh, from Aftershock also. And I really like this because it has this, like, it has this fantasy feel, uh, but not like the fantasy that's based on, like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or something. And then it's not like some of the weirder fantasy that we get with comics, which is awesome too. But it it almost feels like Harry Potter meets meets Shakespeare. And I've liked it so far. Oberon seems to be the villain in it. There seems to be a bunch of other villains in it. And it follows a young lady, a young girl that is has some kind of power that she doesn't know about. So that, that's where that, that Harry Potter feel really comes, uh, in my opinion. Uh, moving on from Aftershock, uh, Aftershock Comics, Ahoy Comics is something I always want to like point out. Uh, they have Bronze Age Boogie number two coming out, but I really didn't 
the cover looked pretty cool, but I really didn't have uh, much to say about it. So Alterna Comics, you know I like to mention them. Uh, I actually subscribe to Alterna Comics, so I get all these every month. Um, just eyeballing it, though, I think that I might get them after they're released, which sort of sucks, actually. For some reason, maybe I thought I was getting them early. But um, Exilium number 5 of 6 came out. I started subscribing, so I got number 3. So it's probably something I'm going to go and, and get the earlier ones because it looked pretty cool. I haven't read it, but I flipped through and it looks pretty pretty fun. Um, in case you missed it, number four is coming out, I See Why Am I. Um, I didn't, I've been getting those. I haven't read them yet. They look like there's a bunch of short stories. It, they, it is a 99-cent book, so that's big. It came out on Wednesday. Number six is a bunch of short stories. That one's the expensive price of $1.99. Uh, haven't read any of those. And then I was getting Midnight Mystery. It started in the middle of that. Also looks good. So some of these, when you start that subscription, you're, you're getting like that month's book. So if you might get like issue number two or three. So at least for those, I'm going to go and make sure I get the earlier issues. And then once my subscription ends, I'll follow up and finish up some stories. And then I'll decide where I am with Alterna because I like them a lot. You don't necessarily need every single um issue alterna tries to cast this wide net so they have like kids kids uh comics and they have horror comics and superhero comics etc etc but one i am interested in and which i will probably uh get all three of because i I have i'm on the monthly subscription is mighty mascots number one sort of sounds silly and when i look at the um when i look at the solicit here it uh i don't even know where it opened when I look at the solicit, nothing comes up. Oh, there it is. So it looks like very cartoon. Oops, excuse me. Very cartoony. Number one in a three issue limited series. So, a why not? Say hello to the weirdest supergroup to ever grace a four color panel. When a local supermarket becomes ground zero for an evil experiment, eh, it's gonna have like a looks like an Invader Zim feel almost to it. So any alternatives? Cool newsprint. Jump on it. Um. After this, uh, Amigo Comics has Druid's Path, number one, coming out. It says it's a one-shot. So those can be hit or miss, right? We've talked about that. But the comic actually does look pretty cool, at least from the cover. Uh, Druids always have walked along the path. But the new gray towns are burying this ancient um, Tuleric Road. The young adventurer Argento, together with Gaia, Creary, Chris, Cripris, have to fight for this road not to be forgotten. Eh, could have done a better solicit there, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Uh, Antarctic Press sometimes comes out with stuff, but the Jungle Comics have too much of a uh, dirty feel to me. Archie, I really just want to have someone on the podcast. It's a big Archie collector. I love it that Archie's on seven, like issue number 700, by the way. But I just really need to understand Archie, and I and I don't, and I don't really want to pay four bucks for that kind of comic, you know. Um, Avatar is just putting a bunch of that crossed stuff out. Um, I normally skip that. Boom Studios has some cool stuff out. Empty Man number seven by Colin Bunn. There's the Vanessa Del Rey cover I always get. Jesus, the Jesus Hervas covers have also been good, so that's been sort of hard pick for me. But I I'm a big fan of Vanessa Del Rey. Um, I so. A big theme of today is a bunch of... I got behind on my reading, so a bunch of books are coming out where I haven't read the previous issue, and in some cases, the issue before. So I'm not even sure how far behind I am on Empty Man, um, and I hope I didn't forget to buy an issue of it. So Empty Man number seven is coming out. I need to... Um, I'll probably pick that up and then make sure I have number six and then read them all and put up a review on YouTube for Empty Man. Um, also coming out is Ronan Island... Uh, number three, I really enjoyed that. Had like a little um, younger kid feel to it at the beginning, right? Because uh, a young girl and a young guy are are racing to see who like the defender of an island is, um, and then uh, some dark stuff comes to the island. Actually, the people that they fought off come to the island, but it turns out there's an even bigger threat. So I enjoyed those first two issues. Um, there's no review up, but uh, with Ronan Island number three up, I will review the first three altogether. So look for that on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. And that's it for Boom Studios. Um, 
a lot of covers coming out from Boom Studios. Not a, you know, I guess three out of one, two, three, four. So four actual books coming out, and I'm picking up three of them. No, two of them. So I don't know. Anyway, so that's not too bad. Um, Dark Horse didn't grab me very much today, uh, this week. There's not much there. I'm not against Aliens Resistance. When something cool comes out from them, you know, I'll probably, like, go take a look or something. But, um, you know, one of them have to, has to grab me. Uh, Anthem number three is out, but I haven't been reading that, so I, I can't say much about it. Uh, Black Hammer, Age of Doom. There's a lot of Black Hammer books coming out. Um, eventually I'll catch up to that because Jeff Lemire is this great writer. He seems to be out of the spotlight the last few months for some reason, even though he hasn't stopped writing anything. Uh, but I read the first trade was done with the post superhero thing for a while, but, uh, I will definitely catch up to, um, Black Hammer eventually, just probably not this week. And then something I have been collecting is weird or word. I don't know how to say it. Wired could be a lot of things. Um, number three is coming out. This is like a, a lot of superhuman kind of books are, are been coming out, and, and that's one of them, basically. Okay, it's DC, one of the, the first of the big two. Let's see what's here. So I've been trying to de-Batman myself, and as you guys probably know, it is hard to get away from Batman. I was going to wait for Batman Who Laughs to end, and then I was going to wait You know, I was going to continue to collect the Tom King Batman, and then I was going to finish Detective Comics through this Arkham Knight. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then Batman and the Outsiders came out, and and I've been seeing an ad for it for a while. And to, to be honest, it would be easy for me not to read it. Except recently, I've uh, really enjoyed Brian Hill's writing, and that's who's writing Batman and the Outsiders. And uh, it's a little bit different. It's Batman leading, I think, of a more street-level team, which is, to me, is very cool. And um, and Brian Hill's writing it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna at least do a first arc of it. Uh, Batman Who Laughs is winding down. I thought issue number four, you know, was sort of a, a, a hold the wall kind of issue, hold the door kind of issue. Um, not, it wasn't any worse than any of the other issues, but it was like, oh, we got used to Batman who laughs and what's happening. The story moved along, but, um, it didn't just like excite me or anything like that. Right. So Batman who laughs number five and six is, this will be the penultimate issue of the series. Um, that's been really cool with actually a very cool character. Batman who laughs is actually a very cool character. Um, Catwoman number 11. I, I don't know if I'm going to stop reading this or not. Um, I may pick up this last Catwoman. We'll see. I've been grabbing them. I like Joel Jones a lot. I didn't read the last two issues, I think. So either I'm going to catch up or I'm just going to put it back and, and grab it if I need it once I read the other two issues. We'll see. Um, like a lot of people, we're always like cutting down on what we're reading, it seems like. We just get caught up and we need to cut it, out, cut some out. So that's the case with Catwoman um, and Captain America and Shuri, which I'll talk about. Uh, Detective Comics 1003 is out. So uh, uh, 1002 actually was pretty good. I thought, um, you know, Arkham Knight, you know, Batman's getting his ass kicked all over the place in DC Comics right now. And he's getting his ass kicked by Arkham Knight. So we got uh, 1003 uh, coming out. So that would probably give me another three issues of Detective Comics I'll be buying. And then I think I'll be pretty easily going to cut that one out. Um other than that, I'll be picking up House of Whispers, but I haven't been reading it. Um, that's definitely something where you're going to get this whole arc review on YouTube probably in the next week or two. And as far as I'm concerned, that's it. I know a lot of people are into Wonder Woman. There's a Jenny Frizen cover coming out. And, you know, Naomi's been in the news, but I haven't been, you know, it didn't. I read the like preview a few months ago, a couple months ago, and it nothing grabbed me from that. Um, Let's see, after that we have Dynamite is the next publisher that is grabbing me. Dynamite, of course, is uh, much more famous, it seems like. Dynamite, I guess IDW is more famous for its licensed stuff, but Dynamite has a lot of licensed stuff too. So immediately you see some Battlestar Galactica. That's something I was actually going to buy, but didn't put it on a list and didn't I didn't see it on the shelves anywhere. Betty Page kind of stuff, you know. Um... 
I think Dynamite has nothing I'm buying this week. James Bond, I'm not interested in. Red Sony, I'm not interested in. So Dynamite was easy for me to jump over. Um, I see these Fantagraphic books and, you know, they all look cool, but I got to wait for them to win awards or something to buy them. Um, and some of them come out real expensive. So sometimes that's like library reviews for me. But um, if you guys know what I should be reading in Fantagraphics, you know, let me know for sure. IDW, uh, the biggest thing that came out of IDW besides all of these uh, licensed books to me is um, Eve Stranger. Now, Eve Stranger just sounds like a like a weird super shit show, basically. Um, there's like nanobombs in her. I, this is not the best solicit, but I get what's happening. So you have unlimited funds, a jet set lifestyle, and extraordinary abilities, and your bloodstream is filled with nanobombs. The contents of a syringe will deactivate them for a week and also wipe your memory. So there's going to be like a a memento meets James Bond thing sort of going on there. Um, I might pick that up. Black uh, Crown is just one of the publishers I just like to sort of support and, um, and read a lot of. So... Uh, I didn't, for some reason, I, I missed it in, in the previews. Um, it is a one of five, so, you know, you know that there's an ending. It's not supposed to go on forever and then eventually get canceled in an important part. So if I see that on the shelf, it didn't get into my inbox. But if I see it on the shelf, definitely going to pick that that one up. And that's about it, though, from IDW. I should mention that uh, Lodger number no. 5 is coming out, but I, I haven't been grabbing those. I should mention, though, that... Um, Black Crown is an imprint of IDW. So I was saying I support Black Crown. I support the imprint Black Crown of IDW. Um, image. So a couple things to point out in Image is uh, Curse Words 21 is coming out. You know, I've just become a Charles Soule fan, but I haven't read Curse Words. And he seems to, whenever he's being asked about like Star Wars or you know, Daredevil or something that he was writing before Ch- um, Chip Zdarsky, you know, he always says how much he loves Curse Words. And um, I think I bought the first trade, and that's just been sitting on a shelf, so I need to mark that for reading. The One of the only number ones coming out is, uh, for Image is Excellence number one. Uh, that looked that looked like reasonably cool to me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It is um, from, uh, from the Skybound imprint, who, you know, does... Uh, Murder Falcon, and what's the other thing I get from Skybound? I can't remember now, but I really like the Skybound stuff. So uh, this is uh, one that like sort of I didn't put on a list also, but I'll probably get it if I see it just because – or I'm trying to avoid number ones too. So maybe I'll have some uh, – maybe I'll have some – how do you say it? Uh, willpower and not get it. Maybe I should avoid number twos and just grab number ones because those end up getting – Sometimes hard to find. Or maybe I should avoid number threes. See, I have no willpower. It's going away. Uh, Gunning for Hits number five is coming out. One of my favorite books uh, out right now. This is also one where I'm behind on it. So I need to read number four and then I'll read number five. And that'll give me, uh, you know, a spot to review it. So definitely look for the Gunning for Hits review out on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Ice Cream Man has been pretty popular but fallen off. Uh, Infinite Dark has also been pretty popular. Fallen off. Murder Falcon number eight is out. Uh, look for a review on that for sure. And um, that's enough as far as the things that are grabbing me. Section Zero, I didn't grab that uh, last month. And uh, that's number two. So maybe I had some will- willpower there. Oh, and then the last issue of Vindication. That's a crime book. I would say it's uh, pretty good too. Sort of the same string as American Carnage, I guess. Uh, but... uh I, I've liked it. I didn't read number three, so it's going to be the same idea. When If I get it, uh, or when I get it, I will have to put them together uh, in a review. And I'd love to talk about Lion Forge, but I don't know anything about the book. that book there. Let's see. And Age of Conan, Belit, number three of five. I really like that story. You've heard me talk about it before, that the art doesn't grab me. I, I've just been into the art for that world. I love the way the art looks in in the two Conan books, and actually Savage Avengers, which I, you know, a friend of mine bought and I read. So I really like when Conan's drawn that way or that world's drawn that way. Age uh, Age of Conan Belit is a great story. 
but the, the drawing inside is a little bit more cartoony. I, it's, I almost wish Sana Takeda, who does the cover, um, was also doing the interiors there. But, I mean, her style, I think, takes a lot of time. And uh, she's killing it on, on Monstrous. And oh, Stephanie Hans is doing the, the other cover. That's actually really cool. But with that said, after two issues, I've really liked the story, really enjoy the, the sort of pirate-centered um, story that, it, uh, that it's doing. And I am all for Age of Conan Belit. Uh, Age of X-Men Apocalypse and the Extracts, number three of five. So we're getting into the sort of middle of the stories. Uh, it, this I think this is the last number three. So we'll start doing the number fours starting next week, I believe. Um, so far, the number threes have been like a little bit more of the same. Uh, I'm ready for there to be a bigger twist. So I prob- we're going to probably start getting those in the number fours, right? But... Uh, <sighs> I think we should really have gotten a, a punch in the gut in a lot of these number threes, and, and we haven't yet. So we'll see if uh, a, the Age of X-Men Apocalypse and the x gives us that. Um, I've decided I'm going to start reading... Oh, this is Amazing Spider-Man by Straczynski. I decided I'm going to start reading Nick Spencer's Spider-Man, but uh, we'll see about how I do that. I'll probably be getting them from the library. Captain America number 10, I literally just called at my comic shop and told them to take that off. Um, Conan the Barbarian number six. Uh, it was a sad ribbage covers have been incredible. Uh, that's another book that I'll have to read number five and catch up for, for sure. Um, and after that, for some reason, Savage Sword of Conan, then they're getting released on the same week. I don't think that's very smart. They should probably go either week because it's easy to get over Conan. If I didn't like the book so much, it'd be easy for me to cut one of them, I think. So that's not the smartest in my opinion. And then we're at the Star Wars books. So um, we have... Oh, not that many. I thought we had more of the Age of... So the Age of Rebellion starts. It's Boba Fett number one. And I'm excited about that. The Jango Fett book was okay. But you can only get so excited about one-shots with these characters that have done a lot in, in, in the comics already. You know, I guess Boba Fett hasn't done too much, but what are you going to really do? So is it just going to be, is, it, is this just going to be a story about a Boba Fett, uh, a Boba Fett mercenary job, bounty hunter job? Is that what we're going to get? That's what a lot of these have felt like. So we'll see. Dr. Afra, I always got to cover my eyes. I wish I was more up to date with Afra, but I, I've been waiting for the hard covers and then they don't come and then they do come. So that's been tough not following Afra because I really like Afra a lot. I'm one of the people that likes her the most. And then a whole bunch of War of the Realms is coming out again. So you got Journey into Mystery. War of the Realms Journey into Mystery number two. Uh, Agents of Atlas. They're just all pulling me in. I'll be grabbing them all. And and then X-Force number seven. So Strife, Young Cable. I think that they're going to kill off Young Cable. But the truth of the matter is I really like Young Cable. So... <laughs> Um, I think it's a good sort of change. It's all time travel, so you can do weird stuff with them. But I, I really enjoy Young Cable. Maybe I'm one of the few that do. And uh, Dylan Burnett's art in this book is just real loosey-goosey. And uh, I like it. It takes a minute, especially on first look. It's it's not that good, but then I end up liking it. Um, I, I think my first, at least where I was read the whole series of Dylan Burnett type art was uh, in the Cosmic Ghost Rider miniseries. So see it. we'll see about that. We've got some Scout comics. Metal Shark Bro number one. I think I put that on my, my pool list. It looks stupid enough. At least I hope I did. Uh, and let's see. What else do we have here? And I think that's it for me, guys. Um, Vault Comics is something I always keep my mind on, but I haven't been reading Wasted Space or These Savage Shores and then some uh, pretty cool anime that I don't really talk about. So, hey, that is the pool list for May 8th, 2019. What are you reading? What are you not reading? Did I get you interested in anything? What should I be interested in? I just want to hear all that. You can tell me that stuff at Chris Sarda on Twitter or uh, in the comments in the YouTube channel or not part of your scene on Instagram. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have been great. And you guys have a wonderful week.